everyone, we're in 2023 Q2 now, and it's a full year past the interest rate hikes, and people are starting to kind of hurt, and you're seeing a lot of good deals in the assignment market. So let's go through this video and talk about the pros and cons of buying an assignment and also selling an assignment as well too. So I'll see, take it from all four angles, the pros of buying something, the pros of selling something, the cons of buying something, and the cons of selling something. And then at the very end, I'll go through actually how to fill in an assignment agreement if you're a realtor. Look, I get it. The Toronto real estate market is confusing. Whether you're a new or experienced investor or just looking for a home to raise your family in, join us at Broadview Table Talks as you sit around the table with my friends to talk about the real estate and the ever-changing market in Toronto. So number one, let's talk about the buyer pros. Well, first of all, you're gonna get a brand new unit and you're gonna take advantage of the price of somebody that you know bought a pre-construction condo about four years ago, and now you get to move into it. And it doesn't have to be a condo. There's pre-construction townhomes, semi-detached, detached, even some commercial condos as well too. Um, so you don't have to wait for it to be finished. You get to take advantage of the market that you know rose up a little bit. And now, because we're in a bit of downturn and people are in a lot of deep trouble, there's deals to be had. Some people are selling still at a profit, especially if you're looking for the one bedrooms or the one plus dens. But if you're looking at the larger ones, the two bedrooms, two plus den, three bedrooms, anything over a million bucks is to say, uh, I find that some of these people are kind of in trouble and they can't close. So they're willing to either sell at a break even or a bit of a loss. It's not the case for everybody. If you have a really desirable unit, you know, they're going to expect some somewhat of a profit anyway, as they should. Typically, I find that because you can't advertise these condos on the market on the, as part of the agreements that you have with the developers because you're competing with their inventory, right? Uh, any excess inventory that they have, they typically don't allow you to put it on the MLS. So you can have less competition to deal with when you're going to purchase the unit because a lot of people don't know about it. It's not in the open market, right? And then the last benefit you have as a buyer is that you don't have to worry about the project being canceled. For the most part, if you're buying something at the late stage when you know you're near occupancy or you've already had occupancy, then the building's already built and you know it's not going anywhere. The challenge is to warn you is that the builders may not allow you or the builders' lawyers may not allow you to assign it within 30 days of closing because you know for the lawyers, there's a lot of paperwork that has to be done for the final closing. It's going to impede with their process, right? If you're just doing these one-off uh, allowing of assignments because at the end of the day, the builders don't want you to default on the purchase. If you're letting somebody else off the hook and you're assigning it to somebody else, that first purchaser is off the hook. And if the second purchaser defaults, well, the assignment agreement basically says that the first purchaser is also liable. So keep that in mind. So let's get into why you would not want to buy an assignment as a buyer. The number one reason is that you typically need to have a large portion of your down payment, right? You need to have the original down payment, the 20% that uh, the original purchaser bought, known as the assignor, you're the assignee as a buyer, right? And the, the seller or the person that who originally bought it from the developer, that's the assignor. You need to basically cover their original 20% plus the profit if there's any. Um, so generally you need a lot of money. Versus something that's resale, you typically put a 5% deposit and then the other 15%, if you go up to 20% down, 80% loan value, that can come at closing. Well, in this case, you probably have to give it all up front. And then another reason why you wouldn't want to deal with an assignment as a buyer is that it's kind of a little more complicated. You have to deal with closing costs, development levies, uh, well, land transfer tax, you got to pay no matter what. Um, but there's just all these little extra fees, tarry on fees and hydro fees, hookup fees, utility fees, education levies, just all these extra costs baked into it, which look, at the end of the day, you're going to pay it no matter what, because somebody paid it before you and they're going to expect to recoup some of those costs. But if you're buying something brand new, you're going to have to account for that as well. Typically, I would say account for another 5% for your closing costs. Now let's get into the pros or the reasons why you'd want to assign it as a seller or as an assignor. If you're in today's market, interest rates are through the roof right now. They're, you know, five, six, 7%, depending on what you're getting, nines on private. Basically, you get to pull the chute and get out of the scenario that you might be in if you can't close. The numbers don't make sense for a rental investment anymore. Um, they just they just don't, I'm sorry to say. They, they really don't. Unless you're putting 35, 40, 50% down, then they'll start making sense and they're start breaking even. At the end of the day, I don't think this is permanent. This is just a temporary issue as we're trying, as the government tries to, or the Bank of Canada tries to fight inflation. Eventually, it'll go back to lower rates. I mean, it just has to. The government debt is too high. The repayment on their debt is too high. And it's like apparently 10% of their budget as well too. So that's going to really hurt. And we can't sustain on this way. When we get inflation back to 2 or 3% target inflation, rates are going to start dropping. You kind of already see that in the five-year bond yield. So hopefully in the long run, 
rates will come back down. But this is kind of like the emergency pull shoot where it's like, uh oh, you're in trouble, get the cash out and you can reinvest it in something else. Number two is that if you're a seller, you avoid all the land transfer taxes, the closing costs, HST, you know, all the rebates and all this other stuff that you have to deal with, like the development levies, like I was saying, and the uh, parkland levies. Another reason is that you don't have to deal with tenants, you don't have to deal with occupancy, you don't have to deal with new construction, you don't have to deal with tenants complaining about the new construction. Because when, you know, when we move into new condos, or even a house, like the landscaping's not done, right? They'll be done next year. There's a lot of construction equipment, a lot of construction personnel and dust, and, and it's just kind of dirty. And a lot of things don't work, like the amenities aren't available in a condo, and um, yeah, tenants just don't like that. The other reason is that with tenants, you're gonna have to lower the price because you know, for a building, let's say there's 300 units, Typically, 50% of it is investors. And, you know, that's just a rule of thumb. It's not like a hard, fast rule. There's, you know, you can say up to 70% is investors. It's really hard to gauge that, right? But let's just say 50% of units are investors. You're going to be competing with hundreds of units. And if you're same stack, there's probably about 10 units that are for lease at the beginning part of, you know, the first year, year and a half. So you're going to have to kind of cut down your price. Now, in 2018, if you bought something in 2018 and newer, then it's not rent controlled. So yeah, the following year, you could increase the rent by a significant amount to catch up to market rates. It's not good for your tenant and that's a controversial issue. They're probably gonna, you're not gonna have a good relationship if you just spring that on them. And if you tell them that upfront, they're probably not gonna wanna rent your place, right? It's just something you have to compete with. You're gonna have other people in the same building. So as a seller, you get to escape all of that, which is kind of nice. And then you take your money, just walk away and move into another investment. Now the cons as why you don't wanna sell, the biggest reason is that you're gonna get taxed on it. Well, one of the biggest reasons. It used to be that if you declared that you were going to move into the, the unit itself or the building or the property, then you wouldn't have to pay HST on the profit because you know, so what, your lifestyle changed, but originally when you're gonna buy it, you were gonna move in there. Well, that's no longer the case as the government tried to clamp down on assignments uh, because prices were kind of going through the roof. This is before the interest rate hikes. So they tried everything they could to bring prices down, which means taxing people for flipping their condos or properties or whatever. Now what happens is on the profit portion as the seller or the assignor, you're paying HST on that profit portion. Not the original deposit, but the profit portion, which could be a significant amount and is not really exciting to do that. Then on top of that, the developer typically wants their assignment fees, they want some legal transfer costs and uh, all that stuff. Then on top of that, builders might charge you, well, they probably will charge you an assignment fee, even though it might say in the recent years, they said there was zero assignment fees, you just gotta pay the legal costs. Well, guess what? Those legal costs are probably about $1,500 to $2,000. And then of course, they don't allow you to advertise the listing on the MLS, so um, because you're competing with their current existing inventory, and on top of that, you're basically setting a price record for other purchasers that may or may not, you know, may mess with their appraisals that they need, which jeopardizes their closing. So that the developers at jeopardy now because their purchasers can't close because all of a sudden you set a low bar on your appraisal, and then all the appraisers are using that sale to value their property. So. It's a bad idea as a developer to allow sellers to be able to, or buyers, sorry, to be able to assign on the MLS and actually stamp the price records. So almost every single listing out there doesn't allow you to advertise on MLS. Now, a lot of people actually do, right? Um, but you're in breach of contract. So if there's significant profits to be had and the developer has an interest in taking that property back, they very well could. Or they could threaten you to deny to by taking away some of the uh, incentives that you would have got, such as cap levies and rent guarantees and interest on deposits, things like that. They could actually just send your letter without any warning and say, guess what? You don't get those benefits anymore. And they can also do that if you decide to sell, assign the unit because it doesn't apply to the second purchaser. It just gets a little more complex with the HST rebate and all that if you took occupancy because how it typically works, that 24,000 that you have to pay back, well, you have to pay first and then you get back. Well, it only applies to the first occupant. So technically the government, their CRA could say that because you took occupancy as a seller, the next purchaser is the second occupant. You have to argue it. For the most part, they'll allow it. But there's a chance that if you actually moved in, the person buying after you doesn't get that credit if they decide to rent it out. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if I confuse you there and I kind of talk fast. So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's get into an actual assignment agreement. I'll go through some numbers with you, okay? All right, so you're gonna be using Form 150. That's the Ontario Real Estate Association and Web Forms. It's called the Assignment of Agreement of Purchase of Sale Condominium, if it's a condominium. I think there's one for freehold as well too, but essentially what you're gonna be going into is the Schedule B, which actually has all the numbers for you. I remember back in the day where this didn't even exist and you had to make it on your own, and a lot of people didn't know how to do it. But um, let's just say you got into real estate recently and you don't know, you've never done one of these. Well, this is how you do it. It's pretty simple. Number one is the total purchase price. 
it's what the assignee, the person buying it from you as the assignor is buying it for. So um, let's just say you're representing the assignee, the person buying an assignment. Well, this is the price that you're actually going to agree to buy it for. Let's just call it a million bucks. Okay, so that's number one. Then number two is the original purchase and sale agreement, and that's you put that as a Schedule C. That's the original price that the assignor bought the place for. For round numbers, let's just use an example of 800000 Okay, number three, straightforward again, how much deposit they've already paid. Let's just say it's 20% of the 800000 so that's 160000 is what you put there, number three. There's a little line in there and says um, you have an option to pay the assignment on these three different scenarios, right? One is the acceptance of the assignment agreement and the receipt of the consent to sign from the developer or original seller, if applicable. And the other option is upon the final closing of the agreement, right? So that's when you get the t mortgage, that's when you get the title. And then number three, op third option is otherwise described in this agreement. Now, typically on the closing of this agreement is when you get paid your commission if you're a realtor. I get that question a lot. So, um, you know, you can do as otherwise described if there's enough money in the profit for the seller to pay the assignor to pay the assignee the commission. And sometimes there's not even that profit and the assignor is not willing to pay that money out of pocket, right? So it just really depends on the deal. Number four is basically um, you take number one minus number two. That's the profit of the assignment agreement. That's where I messed up my previous video in case you're wondering. Um, but essentially 1 million minus 800,000 is 200,000. Number five is the deposits paid in this assignment agreement. So in the form 150 in the current agreement, say you bought it for a million bucks and say your deposit is 5%. $50,000. That's what you put in there. And then the balance, number six, is basically number three, so the original deposits, plus number four, the remaining balance of the profits, minus the deposits are already paid, number five. So three plus four minus five gives you number six. So in our example here, it's 160, 160,000 plus 200,000 minus the 50,000 already paid as a deposit. The remaining balance is 310,000. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. There's a lot of nuances and some more complexities depending on the deal. If you have any questions, you're thinking about buying an assignment and you don't know what you do, well, chances are you're probably a realtor watching this, otherwise you wouldn't look up this video. But if you're looking to buy an assignment, you're looking for a good deal, let us know, we got stuff for you. And if you wanna sell your assignment and get rid of it, we have strategies to help you get rid of it for top dollar. So please book an appointment, reach out to me. Uh, there's a link in our description here in the video and you just schedule a 15 minute consultation and uh, we'll match up our calendars and let's make this happen. Talk to you soon. Add it up. Thanks for sticking out to the very end. I hope you got some value out of this. Do me a favor, please press like and subscribe, but more than anything, leave me some feedback so we know what to produce for you going forward. Thanks again.